Hello and welcome to the Chow Bella Midnight Spell mini album tutorial series designed for Scrap and Create. All of the products that are available on the Scrap and Create website are linked in the description box below so you can click on those links, purchase those products to follow along. Let's get started. In today's tutorial, we are going to begin decorating page two. So the first thing that I have, I'm going to be using my smaller ribbons here. These are going to be a tie closure. I've cut them to about eight inches in length. I like to have smaller bows. If you want your bows to be a little bit longer or bigger, then you wanna go ahead and make yours maybe about 10 inches long. I'm going to mark here on the center of my page base and I'm going to mark here on the center of my larger flap. Then I'm going to place my adhesive here and here. Then I will add my ribbon, just the end of it. Don't need to add a lot. I'm gonna add one there and then I will add one here. From this eight by eight paper, I have cut the right portion of the page to four inches by seven and three quarters. So I just trimmed a quarter of an inch off the bottom. I'm going to be placing this piece here to cover the end of the ribbon on this flap. Then opening up to cover the end of the ribbon here, From the 12 by 12 paper, from the top left corner, I cut a piece that measures two inches by seven and three quarters of an inch. And I will be placing this piece here to cover the end of that ribbon. For this portion on the base of the page, I've taken one of my fussy cutting sheets and I've cut it to four inches by six inches. It's going to go here in the center. Then I have these two pieces and they were from this 12 by 12 paper here. And they were here at the top and I've cut these to four inches by seven eighths of an inch each. So they are going to go one at the top and then one at the bottom. Then I have this piece and it was the piece that was left over. So the Cinderella image here, this was the other portion of the page. I've cut this to four and a half inches and I'll place it here on the top portion. Then I'm going to apply my adhesive down the sides of this flap and close it to form my pocket. I've taken this 12 by 12 paper again. I've turned it this direction and I've cut this four inches by three and a half inches, I believe. Three and a quarter inches. And it's going to go here. Then I have this little scrap on my desk that I trimmed to four inches in length that I'm going to place here. And I took this little cut apart card from the eight by eight paper. And I'm just going to place this here as a decoration for my pocket. Now that I have all of my papers on, I'm going to go ahead and just slide that photo mat down into my pocket for now and I will come back and decorate this at the end. Before I tie this closed, I am going to go ahead and place my lace trim here. Now you could place lace trim here or here, or you could put it on both of your edges. I'm just going to be placing my lace trim here. So I'm going to apply that and then I'm going to tie this close before we come in and work on the inner pages. Next, I'm going to flip this open and decide where I want to place my magnet so I can place it in the center here or I can place it up 
on or down on one of these flaps. It really just kind of depends. I could place it on my belly band, which would put it in the center of the flap. So I'm going to, I think I'm just going to place mine kind of down here. So I will take my magnet, got my card, I don't want it to get in the way. And so it's about two and a quarter, two and a half inches from the bottom edge of my page. And then I'll apply my coordinating magnet and go ahead and close that page to place it on this flap here. Now I have my little piece that I'm going to do for my little pull tab. And that is going to be over here. I actually should have put it underneath the paper here. So I'm just going to use my spatula to lift this up. If you do not want to do this, you can apply this right here on both of them there and it'll be fine. But I'm going to apply mine underneath that paper on the front. If you do what I did, just be really careful that you don't rip your paper. I'm gonna take my spatula again to lift this up. And I'm going to place this underneath there. And that should stay down because ribbon, the adhesive will seep through both sides of that. And then I can loop it around on this back side. like this. Now from this 12 by 12 paper, I cut this to three and a quarter and then seven and a half. Then I've cut this into two pieces that are three and three quarters by three and a quarter. I'm going to place one here and one here on the fronts of these flaps. Then I had a little leftover piece of my yellow paper. This was from the fussy cut sheets and I had a strip left over from one of the photo mats that we already cut. I've cut these to three and three quarters and they're three eighths of an inch wide. And I'm just going to add these down the side here just to break up some of that pattern. And I've used this same paper. So I've cut this from across the bottom. I just cut a strip off the bottom to one and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And I'm going to place this here on the front of my belly band. Then I've taken this 12 by 12 and I've cut two pieces. They measure two and a quarter by seven and three quarters. I'm going to place one piece here tucking underneath the belly band and one piece here tucking underneath the belly band. I did go ahead and place my card back under my belly band here. I'm gonna flip these open and start with this. I have my two pieces cut. It is the same paper that I used for here from the 12 by 12. So these pieces measure three and a quarter by three and three quarters. And I'm going to place one piece each here and here. Then I've taken this 12 by 12 paper. I've cut this down to six and three quarters by seven and three quarters. It's going to go here on the base of the page, but I'm going to actually cut into this to create a tuck spot to place a photo mat behind it. That paper is so pretty, I wouldn't want to actually stick a photo on the page to cover it. 
So I thought that if it was cut, then I could tuck a photo mat in there and it would pull out and you would still see all the pretty paper. So I am going to be using my craft knife or my fussy cutting scissors. And I'm going to cut from about here. So on the clock about, let's just go with this. I've marked it at three eighths of an inch. So about three eighths of an inch. I'm going to cut along here. I'm not gonna go up around that. I'm going to cut along this part up to the rows. Then I'm going to cut around the rows here. I'm not gonna cut these blue flowers and I'm gonna cut into the leaf here. And I think that might give me enough. If it doesn't give me enough, then I'll come in and cut up through here and into this. Actually, that might be a better spot to stop. So I'm going to stop about here on this rose. Or if I go into there, that would be even better. So I'm going to stop here at the tip of this rose and then this darker color for this leaf. So I'm going to fussy cut around the rose, around this leaf, down this leaf here, around my rose, down the gold portion of the clock and down into here. I'll come back and show you what that looks like and then I will show you how to put it on the page. I have my piece cut, so from the bottom portion of the clock around my flower and up here just to the tip of there and it should work fine for my photo mat. So when I place this here on the page, I have a white cardstock mat cut to five and three quarters by four and a quarter when I place it in here, it will fit this direction. It will not fit this direction. So if you do want to fit a photo mat this way, you'll just need to keep cutting around the flower, probably up into this one too, so that it will sit like that. But I'm going to be placing my photo mat here like this. And I'm going to make sure that I don't adhere any of this this part here down. So you don't want any adhesive here. And what you're going to do is come along the cut edge on the other side because we do want this to be adhered down. And then We'll go around the edge of the entire piece. And then this portion will get adhered down. And then up here I can put a little bit of adhesive on the top portion. So there's no adhesive on this part of the clock. Then I'm just going to place this on my page like I normally would. Make sure that there's that uniform border and then I'm going to adhere this down. Now once I have that down I'm going to take my little spatula just so that I can get this up and I'm going to put my bone folder in here to make sure that I have those ends around that cut piece adhered flat. Then I'm going to take my mat and just place it in there for now and then I'll come back and add some decorative paper to that whenever I add my decorative paper to my card. I'm going to flip this closed, flip that closed. And for now we are finished with the front side. We'll flip over and work on the back side. Then we'll come back and add our little embellishments to the front of the page. To start with the back side, I've cut two more of my small ribbons to about eight inches in length. I've marked the center of my first waterfall flap and the center on the base over here. I'm going to just add my adhesive to both of these. 
and then apply my ribbon just like I did on the other side of the page so that they're just hanging slightly off the edge. This is the 8x8 paper that I'm going to be using for this page. I first cut from the bottom, making sure this is six and a quarter inches. Then I have cut this piece to four and a quarter inches for the front of my flap. Then from this piece, I've cut these and kept them in order. So this is a half an inch and I'm going to open this. This first half inch flap, or this first half inch piece, is going to go on the end of this flap. That way, when this is on, it actually looks like a continuous image because the paper is going to be in order. Then I've cut the second piece, it's another half inch, and it is going to go here on the end of the next flap. And then I've cut my third half inch strip and it is going to go here at the end of this flap. From this 12 by 12 paper, I cut a strip across the top that measured six and a quarter inches. Then I cut it into three pieces that measure three and three quarters of an inch. I'm going to take one of each of these and place it here on the rest of my flap. Now you can place it so that there is a small border between the pieces or you can place it right up against your piece like this. I'm going to be placing mine a little bit closer to this right edge so that there is a small white border between my pieces. So I'm gonna place one here, one here, and one here. Now from this 12 by 12 paper, I've actually cut this from the back side. I just wanted to show it to you on this side. It's a little easier to see than the other side. I've cut this, I've cut the bottom to six and a quarter. Then I cut my three, three and three quarter by six and a quarter inch pieces. Then I took this piece that I had left and I've cut this piece I cut one more, six and a quarter by three and three quarters. And I did it this way so that I had this piece of the paper left in case I wanted to use this on another page somewhere else. So you will need to have four pieces that measure three and three quarters by six and a quarter. These are going to go on the left side of each of these four flaps. And then the remaining piece that we had left from this, I've cut four more pieces that are a half an inch. And I've kept them in order because I'm going to do the same thing that we did on the front and we're going to have it be a continuous image. So I'm going to place my strip here. I have my small space and then my photo mat. And then I've got my next strip that's going to go on the end. And then I'm going to continue these ones here and here. And then I'll be placing the rest of these on the remaining portion of the flap. From this 12 by 12 paper, I have cut four pieces that measure 3 eighths by six and a half inches. Now I'm going to place one of these strips between each of my flaps to cover up that white space. So it will fit perfectly between there. And you shouldn't see any of them poking out. So if you do, you'll want to trim them. Actually, I only need three. I completely forgot this one is going to have a different piece of paper. So you only need to cut three pieces to three and three eighths by six and a half and go ahead and place those down. From this 12 by 12, I've cut the bottom left corner to five and a quarter by six and a half. I'm going to be placing this here 
and I want to make sure that when these flaps are closed, the top and bottom edge of the flap actually line up with the top and bottom edge of my paper. So you wanna be careful how you put this on. Then from this 12 by 12 paper, I'm getting down to just little scraps left. I had a strip across the top that was one and a quarter inches. So I cut that one and a quarter inches off and then I trimmed this down to six and three quarters. And I'm going to place this here at the top of the page. Now, once this is on, I can go ahead and apply adhesive down the sides and fold this up and close it to form that deep pocket for my photo mat. So I'm going to adhere this and I'm going to adhere this onto my page. I've cut a piece of lace to the length of my waterfall flap. And just like with the previous flaps, I'm going to place my adhesive right along this edge and apply my lace there. Then I'm going to tie this ribbon into a bow to close my waterfall. I'm going to add one of my flowers to the page. So just like the other flower, I'm going to cut these yellow stamens off first and I will add a pearl to the center of my flower later. Now I have to decide if I want to add my flower here to the center, or I think I'm going to actually add mine down here. And then I have these from my flourishes. I've actually taken a gold jelly roll pen and colored this one. I thought it was silver looking at the cap, but it actually ended up being gold. But that's okay. And I've got one that's white. I'm not sure whether I like the gold or whether I like the white. And I actually think I like the gold, so I'm gonna come in and color this one gold. I'm going to adhere this down, and I think I can adhere this down first. And then I'll be able to tuck those flourishes underneath. So I will adhere this, and then I'm going to place my pearl in the center and then I will add those flourishes in like I had them after I get the other one colored with my gel pen. I did put my flourishes on and my pearl in the center of my flower and then I added a row of the small pearls up this side here just to give it a little bit of extra decoration. Now on the front I did something a little bit different and I added three rows of my little pearls. So I have some in the center of my lace, some right on the edge where the little pattern in my lace is, and then I put some across from those, but on the paper, just to kind of give it a little bit of something. But because she's in her plain clothes here, I didn't want her to be too fancy. So I thought that was a pretty way to add the pearls, but to leave the picture a little bit more plain. So we are now finished with page two at this point. We will come back later in another video and work on those photo mats, but for now we are done and that is the end of this tutorial. If you are just joining the tutorial series, don't forget to check the links in the description box below where you can purchase all of your Chow Bella Magic Spell products and the other products that I'm using from the Scrap and Crate website, as well as the chipboard pieces that I have in my Etsy shop if you want to follow along. I'll see you in the next tutorial.